How's it going guys? Welcome to the video. I'm going to be talking about the Canon R6 firmware update that came out recently a few weeks ago um, and really touch on the two major things. I'm going to talk briefly about us now having dual card SD card recording, which is awesome. Great addition. And I'm going to talk mainly and show some comparison footage of C-Log and C-Log3, which now we officially have C-Log3 with the Canon R6, which is a great addition. So enjoy the video. All right, guys, I'm going to jump straight into talking about having C-Log3 with the Canon R6. If I'm going to be honest, the main reason why I'm making this video is I actually want to see for myself and compare C-Log with C-Log3 because this is actually the first time I have a camera with C-Log3. Normally with R6, I've been recording everything in C-Log um, and I'm pretty familiar as well with S-Log on the Sony a7S III. So I was kind of excited to see what the difference between C-Log and C-Log3 is. And I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty good improvement from C-Log. I filmed a little bit of uh, comparison footage, three different scenes over the past couple of days. And the differences are probably not as massive as let's say the difference between C-Log and S-Log, but there definitely is a really decent improvement between C-Log and C-Log 3. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm looking at the footage here that I recorded. I'm just gonna kind of talk through the things that I'm noticing. Again, this is the first time I'm shooting with C-Log 3. I haven't actually filmed an actual project with C-Log 3. So everything I'm saying here is just kind of like a first impression, first glance of what C-Log3 is compared to C-Log. So in my first set of footage, I'm gonna take a look at the C-Log recording first. This was just uh, yesterday or a couple of days ago in my backyard. This was around noon, it was a little bit cloudy. So the light was, you know, kind of above me and it was kind of sporadic because of all the clouds. Um, but I'm gonna take a look at the C-Log first and the C-Log is what I'm kind of used to. It is obviously a log profile, but one thing that I've always hated about C-Log, or not necessarily hated, but just always noticed, is it's a little bit too saturated for my liking, even if you desaturate it in your Canon Log settings. Um, I feel like looking at this footage, the greens are pretty saturated, um, the highlights are pretty sat satura saturated. If you look into the shadows, like the shadows are very saturated for, you know, compared to like, let's say an S-Log, right? Which is like a very, very flat profile. That's like the first thing I notice. Then going over to the C-Log3, you can already tell how much more desaturated and flat this looks. I mean, there's really not much to say besides that. It's just a flatter looking image compared to the C-Log. If you kind of put them side by side, the other thing I noticed besides the saturation, the C-Log3 being way flatter. Um, I believe I looked it up and I think it's like just a full another full stop of dynamic range, but honestly it looks like more than that. Um, so I'm not 100% sure. But the other thing I kind of no noticed is the C-Log3 does look a little bit magenta. These were shot with the same exact settings, same exact white balance. The only difference was the ISO since the base ISO of C-Log is 400 and base C-Log three ISO is 640, no, it's 800. But yeah, the C-Log3 is definitely more magenta, but overall, I think in this example, the C-Log3 looks so much better um, from an ungraded you know, perspective. Um, but just looking at the gray, what I ended up doing for these was just pretty much doing basic exposure correction and adding some saturation to the C-Log3 and then copying and pasting it to the C-Log just to see what the difference would be if they had like the same exact grade. Um, and honestly, the biggest difference that I am seeing is how much punchier the C-Log is. And that's a result of the C-Log 3 being a very flat image. So what that means is um, in theory, or you know, really you'll be able to get a lot more image, a lot more out of your image with C-Log 3. Because even in this example, I'm looking at C-Log and this looks like it's already kind of pushed to its edge as far as like the exposure adjustments and even the saturation like this, the greens look super saturated here. If you look at the shadows, the shadows are almost crushed. The highlights are looking pretty good. But then once you look at the C-Log3, I feel like I can still darken the shadow a little bit more. They're not, nothing looks overly saturated here. The greens, there's a lot of greens in the image, but they're not like too, too saturate, saturated. So pretty much I feel like I can still push this C-Log3 image a lot farther than I can push this C-Log image. 
So let's just take a look at another shot that I did. Um, this is just the palm tree again in my backyard. I shot same exact settings again besides the ISO and the ungraded footage of the C Log 3 again. I'm not gonna go too deep into this. C Log 3 just looks flatter. The shadows look flatter. One thing I kind of did notice when I first looked at these is I think I noticed a little bit more noise in the shadows and blacks on the C-Log3. Again, the base ISO for C-Log3 is 800. So in theory, there might be more noise and lower light situations. But I think besides that, I think the, the C-Log3 again just looks a lot flatter. I don't want to keep repeating that. And the C-Log looks already a little bit too contrasty in my opinion for a log profile. Then again, I did the same exact thing here. Did the same exact grade for both. The C-Log3 looks really good. Still feel like I can probably push it a little bit further, especially the colors. And then looking at the C-Log, this already looks very punchy, very contrasty. And it might look better now, but the reason why is because it's pushed to its limit. I can push the C-Log3 even farther and make it look better than this. And then kind of the last frame I want to take a look at was my normal talking head footage that I film in my room. I don't have a light set up, so I just normally film with my window open to kind of light my face. But something that happens every once in a while is the background gets very noisy because I have a dark or like a, you know, medium gray room. So a lot of the shadows in the wall kind of get like this weird color noise and look smudgy and grainy. And so I want to see if there's a difference between C-Log and C-Log 3. And just taking a look at the footage again, the main thing you're going to notice, the C-Log 3 is just flatter than the C-Log. And honestly, the colors look a lot better in this situation with the C-Log 3 than with C-Log. Um, the C-Log just kind of like, again, gives you like that weird green tone. There's, if you look at the shadows, the shadows already look crushed, um, filmed at 1.8. But then if you look at the C-Log 3, there is definitely a lot more dynamic range here. The colors just look more natural. There is a little bit of that magenta hue, especially you kind of look at like the left and right wall in the grays. There's like definitely a more magenta hue compared to the C-Log, where you kind of get that like more warmer, greener, greener tone. So then looking at the graded C log three, you know, nothing crazy about this image. There is a little bit of noise in like the bottom left, top right, some of the blacks of the PC, um, but nothing that is kind of like staring out as me as a problem. I think overall this looks really good. The highlights are bright, the shadows are, are dark, but not too dark. There's very basic correct man. I think it looks good, it looks really good. Um, and the saturation colors, everything looks very natural. If you look at the F4 footage, I wanted to like just do something a little bit darker. And again, I think the C-Log 3 looks good. There is definitely more noise in the corners and the dark parts of the wall. Um, and again, I think that might just be a result of having the base ISO be ISO 800. But again, it's not too problematic in my opinion. Taking a look at the C-Log graded footage, um, as you can see, it is definitely a lot more punchier. And that is just the result of us not having a better, a bigger range compared to the C-Log3. It's definitely a little bit harder to grade um, and kind of correct the exposure just because it is gonna look very contrasty because its starting point is already not very flat. And the colors just side by side look super different. I mean, it's up to you to decide, I guess, which is better. I prefer the colors of the C-Log3 because it just kind of looks more natural, gives you more room to play. And then at F4, the C-Log honestly probably looks a little better than the C-Log 3 footage. As far as the noise goes, I don't think it's as distracting, but that's also because the shadows are definitely a little bit darker here. So you kind of just don't notice the noise as much. So I know that was a super quick comparison and I didn't get into too much detail and these are only just three scenes and, you know, arguably not the best test, but I just kind of want to see for myself the difference between C-Log3 and C-Log and I was like, screw it, let me just make a video about it. Anyways, overall, I think the addition of C-Log3 is great. I think it is something that probably should have been with the R6 since launch. Um, I think there's probably the possibility that they want to separate the R5 and the R6 at launch to make people buy the R5 if they want C-Log3 and, you know, that whole aspect of you know the camera industry however i am glad that we do have it now and then just to touch on it really quick the dual card slot recording i think this is something that should have been with the camera since the beginning um especially since it's 
two SD card slots. It's not like it's using like a, a CF Express card and an SD card or any difference. So it should be easier in theory, I'm assuming, to have dual recording on a camera that uses two SD cards, not a mix of different uh, data storage methods. So I think these are two great additions. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the screen other uh, firmware update additions that they did with this firmware update. But one very important thing um, that I think this firmware update and the previous firmware updates have kind of cemented for R6 users is Canon is listening uh, to its users and Canon is still trying to improve the R6 even though the R5 exists, even though the R3 is about to exist and the R1 eventually. Um, they're not forgetting about the R6. So adding things like the dual card slot recording is a great addition. Adding stuff like C-Log3 is a great addition, improving the user experience of the camera. But like many of you know, um, I've been very vocal and a lot of R6 users have been vocal about one thing. And this is one thing I hope Canon, hopefully in the next firmware update can finally add or at least address is the not being able to set video settings to the custom dial, um, the two custom dial modes that are on the you know mode dial of the R6. I made a video about this. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. Um, and in that video, if you're interested, I'm going to put the video up there. Um, but in that video, I have gotten a lot of comments of people saying that pretty much this is still a hybrid camera and there's workarounds and you can you know still go to like the Q setting and like it's. People have workarounds, which is great. Maybe I have workarounds, so maybe I will make a video about how I kind of set this camera up for hybrid shooting. Um, but really at the end of the day, especially because I used to shoot Sony, I understand that how easy and efficient it is to be able to switch from your photo mode to mode dial one and be at 24 frames a second and then mode, mode dial two and to be at 60 frames a second with all of your settings already there and not having to do any extra step. Uh, it is just very efficient very efficient, very easy. And in my opinion, if this camera wants to be like the hybrid king shooter, it needs that. I don't want to ramble on too long. I just want to kind of get this video out there um, because this firmware update went live a few weeks ago. And, you know, I just kind of want to test out for myself the difference between C-Log3 and C-Log. So I hope I made sense. I'm usually not good talking about, you know, technical, you know, video camera side of stuff, but I was just interested to do kind of like an eye test and share it with you, my overall thoughts. So just to conclude, yes, C-Log3 is great. If you have this camera, use C-Log3, don't use C-Log. I don't see, unless maybe in a low light situation, maybe C-Log will be better. Um, if you know, I would love to hear what you have to say, comment down below. But I think overall C-Log3 is definitely, definitely better. So use it. And thanks guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at jfernvisions, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace guys.